So I wanted to welcome you. And um, I want to just say that when I have your bios the night before, and I sit in bed, and I watch, I read all about what wonderful badass women you are, I get so inspired because so many of you have been, all of us are on journeys, but first of all, you were able to share it, uh, even, even just a little bit. And I just appreciate you for showing up. Many of you have never been here before. You don't know anybody. And that's our way of just really trying to connect people before you walk in so you don't feel like you're walking in cold. So you're kind of heading towards that person that runs or somebody whose kid went to the same place uh, in school. So the other reason why I put where you live is because when you're heading home tonight, share a cab. Um, the reason why these bios are here and why I want you to see who everybody is and make sure that you have your name tags is that I want you to ask each other out after this, okay? So you've got an assignment. You know, pick up the phone, call somebody, take a taxi home with somebody, just say, hey, listen, let's meet for a coffee. Because if there's one thing that we learned after the pandemic, I just, like, I beat myself up during these last two years for so many reasons, right? For not exercising, for like yelling at my kids, for just being like in my pajamas for like a month at a time. Um, you know, but one of the things was feeling like I didn't connect all of you enough. You know, initially I was doing a lot of Zoom calls and I just lost my mojo and I, I wanted to be in this room and I just yeah, didn't want to do it on Zoom. I, I know, I know. So we all beat ourselves up. But it's just like, I am so happy to be back in this room with all of you. I am so happy. <laughs> so, um, I mean, and I, I do want to say, if anybody's uncomfortable, and it's totally cool. Um, if anybody wants a mask while you're sitting here, it's totally fine. We've got them. Do not feel in any way. If you want to just throw them on, you're more than welcome to. So I want to just give you a little bit of history of the Wise and Wonderful Women, because for some of you that haven't been here, um, I was crazy enough to put a, I, I've always advertised as Annie Gets It Done. I'm, I'm a, a top real estate broker in New York City, and I've always been known as Annie Gets It Done in the movie theaters, and then when I moved into the taxis, I was like, you know what's a great ad? That I can't find a single, a single divorced dad to remarry. That is a great ad. <laughs> and so when I, fi when, I, when I filmed it with Tyler, who, by the way, if he ever, if ever, anybody needs any photographs, any videos of anything, he is the man. But anyway, um, <laughs> so this is recorded and this will be on, there's an Andy Gets It Done website and all of the past speakers are actually on there and he, he makes sure that they're, uh, they're filmed. So if you want to look at them after the, after the fact, you should do that. But anyway, so I put an ad in a New York City taxi saying that I was 56 and fabulous and if you wanted to come and get me, step up. So uh, I... <laughs> Unfortunately, everybody in China and Russia wanted, and, and jail, because there were a lot of people calling our office, unfortunately, you know, uh, Nathan was fielding those calls for the men in jail. And we had a whole file for mail that would arrive. It was like absolutely batshit crazy. But you know what? Maybe if I lowered my expectations, maybe they'd be fine. So anyway, so, anyway, so um, what happened was all these men wrote to me, but all these women were writing me emails. And, I can't tell you to this day still, women will come up to me and they'd be like, oh my God, like, first of all, did you find somebody? Like, so, and I feel like, like, no, you know, like loser. But anyway, I, I, anyway, but that's not, I'm not a loser. You know what? I'm not going to lower the bar. But what they would say to me was, that was so brave of you. Yes. And I said, yes. let me ask you a question. What was brave? And they, and I said, was it putting the taxi ad in about saying I was looking for love? Or was it saying I was 56 and fabulous? <laughs> and they said both. So that was the thing about saying your age, owning it. And the most important thing that comes out of this room is that we are not invisible. We have so much in this next phase of our lives to give, to give to younger women most especially. Because even though, you know, technically it's like for women 45 or 50 and older, when my kids that are 21, show up in this room, they eat it up. They're drinking it up. We need to share and mentor younger women because we have too much to give. So anybody that's, not, that's lost their mojo, I want you to just look around and everybody's showing up to, not, to, to make sure that that mojo is going to come back, right? So there's so many people in this room that are energy healers. There's two of them. There's Alita St. James, world-renowned, one of my closest and dearest friends. 
shift your energy. There are sex therapists back there. We've got, we've got three of them. I raised them. We've got, we raised those hands, ladies, because you know what? We're going to be talking about. <laughs> Wait, okay, Dawn, I want you to raise your hand because Dawn is the founder. I just think this is the greatest thing. I think it's out of all of the bios, it's like the Smutty Book Club. She runs the Smutty Book Club. <laughs> so, we've got an acupuncturist here. We've got many. We've Jackie Jones, a great ENT, which she saved my daughter's life and her head. We've got people that have run for political office. We've got all kinds of badass women in here. So anyway. Um, without further, or okay, couple, two things. Um, there's a Facebook page called The Wise and Wonderful Women. Please do me a favor. Don't let me be the only person sharing articles in there. I want you to just put it out there and go like, hey, listen, I'm going for a run on Tuesday, or I've got a show that I'm going to. Does anybody want to go? Three quarters of you I went through are single in this room, okay? So that's a good thing because you've got other people in here that you can connect with. And that's important because you know what? At the end of the day, your female friends are going to be the ones that are standing beside you. Uh, you know, because we outlive the men that we're with, even if we're in a relationship, we're outliving them. And that's the person that's going to be standing next to you. So your girlfriends are super important. Um, one Block is a nonprofit that I run that cleans the Upper West Side. Who are my One Block ladies? Raise those hands, raise those hands. I just want to say to anybody here, we're having a One Block happy hour. It's going to be once a month. We're doing it at Prohibition on the Upper West Side, March the 1st from 6.30 to 8. It's just a way to get together, meet your neighbors, and you know what? It's the Upper West Side. It's just a great thing to do. Um, so there you go. All right, so I think, and when you take pictures, tag Tag, tag me and cut the Linane on Instagram or put them on the Wise and Wonderful Women page. Thank you very much. Flowers, take those with you. There's also picture, uh, there's uh, pads on there. I want you to write stuff down. If you pick up your phone and you're making notes on your phone, I'm gonna think you're not, you're not listening to us and then you're like you're texting. So this way when I see the old fashioned handwriting when you're putting that down and you're taking notes, I'll know that you're taking notes. But you, Carolyn has got a lot to tell us, so I want you to take notes. But take the flowers when you leave, please, okay? So anyway, so uh, I'm going to introduce you to Carolyn, and honestly, her bio was so long, and I've got such ADD that I would not be able to finish it. But she's gonna tell us all about what she does. But she's a pioneer in a leading edge, non-invasive sexual wellness treatment. I wanna know what that is, because I wanna use my vagina much more than I am. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to be ready for action. Okay, so she is a practicing OBG. <laughs> she is a practicing OBGYN for the last thirty years, and she is uh, she's the author of. Okay, was this perfect or what? She's the author of Ultimate Intimacy: The Revolutionary Science of Female Sexual Health. In addition to the ultimate connection, the blueprint for everlasting love inside yourself. There you go. All right. So anyway, she also is, this is super cool. So Tony Robbins, many of you are, uh, love Tony Robbins, as I do. She actually, the new book that he has coming out. Is that? Come on up here. 8th. February 8th. Okay, come on up here. Um, so she has got the, cha they gave her the chapter in, um, which is Tony, it's Tony Robbins' new book, which is Life Force. And she's got the women's health chapter. I shared it, but yes, yes, there I she did. did. She did. I want to know why there's only one chapter for women's health, but Me that's too, an, but, but that's, that's another, but that's another question. So anyway, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank welcome. you. Thank you. <laughs> I cannot believe the incredible bios I have read. I have never seen a group of such powerful, incredible woman in one room ever in my life. I must say that, and kudos to you, okay. Anne, for grabbing all these women. And thank you. Thank you all for coming out and seeing us this evening. I'm, I'm just very thrilled to be here. So I want to tell you, because I don't even think you know this story, because I have actually not asked her any questions, because I wanted to. I wanted it to be as though I'm getting coming into your office, because... Um, 
I just don't want to assume that anybody knows anything because I know absolutely really nothing about what you do, but I want to know. And the reason why I know is that somebody that will re remain uh, nameless, who's a real housewife of New York, but anyway, just, uh, anyway, she said that she went to this doctor and that she sat on a, she sat on a, I think a throne or something, and somehow her vagina was tighter. She wasn't, uh, she was losing <laughs> urine. She wasn't losing urine, which is a very funny story that's type. But but anyway, that, that everything was tighter. And I yes. said, how did they do it? With a laser. Well, how the heck does that work? So I found your uh, yes. I found you because you were the medical person behind that practice. Correct. And I'm so glad that you're here because the funny story is we actually during the pandemic have been working out in the ballroom instead of the uh, the gym. And we had this um, very wonderful young gay man having us do jumping jacks, okay? And we're jumping, and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And finally, because there's a bunch of women that aren't, you know, like, and I just said, is anybody else, like, basically peeing in their pants? Because so, so anyway, they, and they're like, yes! And I said, we need you, we need you. So can you tell me, what does a laser, like, so, so what exactly is your title? Okay. And I know that you have many different things that people come to you for, yep. but let's talk with the let's talk about the bladder and the vagina first. Let's get that out of the way. All right. Well, I will tell you that I'm a board certified obstetrician gynecologist. I've delivered over four thousand babies, but Whoa. stopped at two thousand and one to raise my own two women. They are thirty one and going to be twenty eight, and they are my true footprint on this planet. But that being said. Uh, being a gynecologist, I stopped obstetrics, doing only GYN, and my income dropped. Ooh. And my ex-husband, at that time, he was my husband, and he didn't like the fact that I was no longer the breadwinner. And he, <laughs> and he said, what are you going to do about this? As he worked seven days a month period. <laughs> and I said, uh, I'm going to stay home a little more and let you work a little more. And I said, my kids need me. And he said, uh, I don't know. I said, no, that's what we're doing. I'm not going to do obstetrics anymore. I'm going to stay home. And he said, well, what are the other doctors in your realm doing? And he went online and figured out that they did Botox. And I came home one night and he said, you are going to learn how to do Botox. Well, the beauty of that is that now I can use it for the vagina. I'll go Botox? Into that. Oh, yes. Oh, God, no. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Oh, yes. But it's not, it's not for looks. It's for a condition where women cannot endure penetration. And by relaxing those muscles, they are able to have sex again. It's called vaginismus. It's a horrible condition. And we can cure it with Botox. But that being said, again, he made me go learn Botox, which was for, you know, above the eyes, et cetera, et cetera. And I was in the realm of cosmetics as a gynecologist. And fortuitously, a rep, a drug rep from, uh, actually, a laser rep, he comes in. He's like, he's strutting his stuff. Okay? And he's super handsome. They're all really good looking, these people in the representative. And he says, I have a laser that rejuvenates the vagina. And I said, turn around, don't let the door hit you in the, and I said, it. and I scared him. I literally kicked him out. He was on, like falling backwards on the, on the pavement. And he goes, please listen to me. Please listen to me. I, 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 I think it can help vaginal dryness and it might even help urinary incontinence. I said, you, you say what? I went, bing. I said, what do you say? And he goes, I think this laser can fix things. And I'm like, okay, now I'm listening. And you're listening. So, it's amazing what these devices can do. So I had the first laser that can treat vaginal dryness and urinary incontinence. So let me, so let me go back. Yep. So why, so I was not, I feel like I didn't have, or I don't have, enough, I didn't have, because now I'm getting smarter, enough of a dialogue with my gynecologist yes. to understand. Yes. Like, it was just like, okay, you become menopausal, you dry up, and you become a prune, yes. and like, I don't understand why. 
But I also didn't understand what you could do about it. Yes. That you need to be able to, like, because the lining of your vagina, this is why it gets thinner yes. when your hormones, when you start losing your hormones. Yep. Okay. So that is something that you can d use also with the suppositories in terms of, yes. right? Standard in of terms care. of estrogen Standard, right. suppositories. Correct. Right. All kinds in of and out of the vagina, you modes. should use those, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But so why would a laser, so why does a laser work? Because I would think that that would do the opposite. Would okay. burn. Okay. Absolutely. Brilliant question. Isn't she smart? Mm -hmm. yeah. So lasers do exactly that. You're, what you, we're familiar with using them for facial rejuvenation. This is the exact same laser that has been used for 40 years for severe acne, skin resurfacing. It's a CO2 pixel laser. Pixel means it makes little holes now. Originally, it was like it would just do the entire area and destroy it. But now it makes little holes. Little holes are surrounded by healthy s tissue, and the body's response to a, a micro injury like that is to jump in and build new collagen and new blood vessels. So I'll go back to your original question. The vagina dries out. What happens to our vagina is that without estrogen, the blood vessels that supply all the nutrients for the vagina to be supple, to stretch, to lubricate, are gone. The blood vessels disintegrate. Right. Without that blood flow, which mm -hmm. also goes to our clitoris, and I'm going to say vagina and clitoris a lot, so get used to it, and all of that no longer works. So. Without blood supply, we lose sensation, we lose lubrication, and we lose the ability to accommodate. So at the opening, which we call the introitus, when you cannot tolerate penetration, it feels like they're ripping us in half when they're trying to penetrate, and then all of a sudden, overnight, it can turn into feeling like the round hairbrush. I'm like, honey, put down my chi. Where's that other thing we used to use? Like, where's your penis? What happened? What the hell? What is that? What is that? It was horrifying. Horrifying. And overnight, like that. So is the laser going in, is it a wand? It's a wand. It's about the, about that, the circumference is about that round. Usually, we do have a finer one for women who are further advanced. Uh, and how many times do you have to go? Once a month for three visits, and that's the way the laser works. There are other devices now. Lasers are the gold standard. Lasers are still the device that work the best, most efficiently, and are going to fix the problem quickest. And if I'm making an appointment with your front desk, am I just asking for the vagina laser? No. What exactly is that? You're, asking for, you're asking for a consultation. The magic, the magic wand? Consultation. What am I consultation. <laughs> but because there are many other devices. You mentioned a little bit about the Kegel throne. That we well, I didn't up. know about that because well, that I mean, is, I just, that's I mean, the chair that It's a real chair? Okay. Oh, yeah. it's a chair. Okay, it's so chair. please do tell. Okay, so <laughs> there's a chair that has energy that's called high-intensity focused electromagnetic energy. And I brought the first one to Manhattan. That chair that we sit on, are you ready? Makes you Kegel 11,200 times, super maximally. That means stronger than your body could ever do on its own. So when we pick up a weight, when we pick up a weight, we can, and this is a, this is, it's extra. This, I don't go to the gym. So I'll discuss that in a second. So when you pick up a weight, we can only fire 40 to 60% of our muscle fibers because the message has to go to our brain, has to come back, make muscle twitch, right? Well, this chair bypasses the brain. It's a two Tesla magnet in its strength. Okay, just, I, it's like. <laughs> yes, yes. So, yes. okay. Like, so you I sit on it. I call it the Amcella wiggle. So women have to find the spot. I have to, like, okay, move forward, move back. Okay, do you feel it? And it tickles the anus I, is the, when it's working correctly. It's tickling the anus and it works all the way up to the pubic bone. So the, the pelvic floor. And everything squeezing, 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 squeezing. Unbelievably. Squeezing. So I can now say that I can crunch a walnut with my There you go. <laughs> you didn't put that in the bio. I, I did not put that in the bio. I One can, of my patients I said can. she can smoke a cigarette. Now that's TMI. That's TMI. There you TMI. go. There you go. <laughs> but the strength of the muscles are critical because that's what keeps us continent. Okay. And we can engage them at times when it's 
especially fun. Okay. There you go. Okay. There I can say that. Go ahead. <laughs> And okay, so that's gonna keep because uh, I mean now it's like I'm driving along. I go, you know what? I think I have to go to the bathroom. It's like, oh my god, I've got to go to the bathroom. It's like exactly. it's like that's urgency. Like, right. That's urgency. Right. Exactly. So there's there's stress and urgent. So that will that will help helps both. So Correct. you're not using a laser for that, but no. what you are doing fully is basically clothed. fully clothed. So you sit on the throne. Yes. And you just and you kegel away. <laughs> and it's so how many times? Six visits. Okay. One or two a week. Till you finish six, so any combination thereof, you can come twice a week. For and three and weeks. how much is how much? Is, you have an office by the yeah, way, I have in New Jersey and in New York. I have no but, idea the cost. Okay, roughly, Lexi, for the whole for the, for the whole series. Mm -hmm. Okay, I gotcha. And what what about the laser? Lexi is her trusty assistant, uh, sidekick. Yeah, wind so beneath her winds. Um, it's twenty nine hundred for three, I believe. And that's for the laser. Right, got it. Three any of that covered by insurance? No. Okay. All right. They don't care about us. Okay. So I've been on my soapbox since 2013. Want to hear something despicable? Do you know the excuses I get? Well, women can still have sex, even if it hurts. Men without an erection. That's can. A, that's a draw. That's a crisis. Twenty right? medications are on the market for male erectile function. God forbid. God forbid they can't have an erection. And it's all, every one of them is covered by insurance. We have two drugs on the market now in the past seven years that have come to market for women for desire, so libido. They're both for our brain, and it doesn't matter if it still hurts. So why want it if penetrating is agony? Why like be desiring it when you can't have it? It's good for premenopausal women who have a decreased libido, maybe. It works in 30 to 40% of them. I see someone lifting her what, glass. What's, what's the name if of that? If that glass, it's Addy, A-D-D-Y. Okay. The issue is, if you go out and have a glass of wine and you've taken your Addy, you might die. <laughs> that's the risk. Oh, that's not I've a never prescribed it because I'm not going to have that on my conscience, nor will it happen on my license. I'm not giving a woman so because we all know, as an American woman, if we go out to dinner on, on a weekend with a group of other couples, we're sitting there. Oh, no, no, no. everyone's having. Oh, no, no, no. Thank you. Are you pregnant? <laughs> well, well that would be a you? little odd. Oh, no, if they I want to have sex later, and I don't want to die. Like. What are you gonna say? It's, it's ridiculous. Oh no, I, I should be fine. Give me a sip. And there you go. How ridiculous That's crazy. is that? That's crazy. The other medication is Vilesi. So one's Addy, one's Vilesi. Vilesi is an injectable that you have to inject yourself four hours before your, your desire to be intimate. You know what its side effect is? Severe nausea and vomiting. So, <laughs> Hold my hair, honey. <laughs> But do me from the back? I mean, like, <laughs> you got me. You hear me. How ridiculous is this? Okay, things are not working. It's but, not we, working. But, but there is hope with the laser. That's right. So, okay, How long so, does the laser last after this? The treatment, once a year. You don't have to come back for three, just one. And there are more devices. I just finished a study on a device called Duo, D-U-O. And by the way, I have to say the chair is good for men too. And that matters because we have partners. so what are they kegling for? Like what, like, like they are kegling for kegling. erectile <laughs> functions and urinary continence. So oh. there's probably not a woman in this room who has slept with a man over 50 who hasn't gotten up at least once, maybe twice, in the middle of the night to pee. Huh. And that's because of their prostate. Right, of course. But I'm the chair kidding. solves that. Okay, all right, the chair. They should have had the chair here. When, uh, yes. What is the chair called? Mcella. What? Mcella. It e sounds like the Acela -E on Amtrak. -E <laughs> I am going to ride that baby. E M is electromagnetic <laughs> energy, and Cella means chair. I'm going to ride that. <laughs> <laughs> so I say it should be at every airport gate. I think Why so. Why should we have Why are you gonna, you, you can get your toes done and get a little bit of... We're sitting in the airport. <laughs> So um, one of the things that also, and I don't, and, I, and yeah. you're a gynecologist, and I, I, the when the lining gets thinner, yes, urinary tract infections go through the roof. Yes, is that and vaginal infections. 
and that, that, bacterial vaginosis becomes extremely common. That's all from a change in pH. And around our urethra, there's basically our G-spot, is a cluster of soft tissue. Everyone has one, but it's a matter of how sensitive the G-spot is. We can find it now on ultrasound. Everyone has one, it varies. Some women like to be kissed on the nape of the neck, it's very erogenous. Some women kiss me, I don't feel anything, who cares, right? Or the nipples, same thing. G-spot, sensitive or not sensitive. You all have one, it's whether it turns you on or it doesn't. Simple as that, it's an erogenous zone. So, so that area supports our bladder neck. When we lose the blood supply to our G-spot, not only does it lose sensation, but it loses the ability to support the bladder neck. And when that happens, we become incontinent as well as having no barrier to help keep that urethra closed so bacteria get in there very easily and our urinary tract infections go up. So the urologist will always use estrogen cream first. Right. They'll tell you to use a dollop, a pea size amount, put it around the opening three times a week. We've all heard it, we're old enough. And that helps, it definitely helps. There, I can't tell you how many times I have had a, a people in my life that have had urinary tract infections and the gynecologist has actually said, just take one antibiotic yeah, every so time you have sex. Yeah, my, my Are you out of your mind? Are you crazy? I'm, I'm not doing that. I am not doing that. I'm not doing that. No. no. They told me that like this year. No. no. <laughs> I, I, a younger person in my Think life, about they were telling that at bottom, 20 years old. Right? Are you out of your mind? There's got to be a better way. This, well, first of all, medical, uh, we've got to be studying women and, and women's health. That's another thing. Um, so one of the things that you're, so in terms of that, yes, in theory, not in theory, but in practicality, you're going to be, if you're using the laser, mm -hmm. you're going to be building that up. That's correct. You're using the estrogen cream together, both of them. You don't, usually you don't need the estrogen cream once you've done the laser. Let me explain estrogen cream. There are four different formulations of estrogen on the market. There's also DHEA, which is another hormone from our adrenal gland. That I'm, I know all the standard stuff. I talk to all my patients about everything because you're educated consumers. You're gonna use what you're comfortable with. So on the market, we have the four preparations of estrogen. We have a small little pill, go on a little pencil applicator, Vagifem, Uifem, it's now generic. You can use- That's the twice the, a week one? That's correct, it okay. looks like a little pill. Okay. It doesn't help the opening, it doesn't help the introitus, which is my beef with that one. And is then, that the cream you're supposed to use on the outside? Yes, but why use two things if you can use the cream alone? Cream alone you can use about once a week, once you do a build up. You can build up the use of the estrogen cream, I usually five to seven days. Every day, it's a small amount. It's only about one centimeter on the applicator. It's not the full applicator like you do with the yeast medication where you feel like you're wearing cold cream in your vagina all day. So just a little bit, and that's once a week. And the beauty of that is that it leaks out. I know that sounds gross, but the truth of the matter is it's important because it's gonna hit the opening. Because if he's knocking on the door and can't get in, who cares what the walls look like? <laughs> so, but would right. you wear it? Would you use it during the day so it drops, or can you any time? It doesn't is matter. It, is it at night? It a little matter. bit easier. At night, when you wake up, it's still gonna, right? You know, come out. Okay. All right. So, the it, the other preparation is a little pink jelly bean. Now it looks like a little. It's it's very nice. That also bursts open and leaks. So the two that hit the introitus are the cream and the uh, Invexi, it's a little pink jelly bean. Yeah. One of the things that, um, when, when, okay, so let's, let, let's, I just wanna talk about the things that you have on your menu. Okay. okay. So we've got, obviously, desire, we're talking about the hormones mm -hmm. that are gonna, and, and it was very interesting, because she said, when somebody comes to me the first thing, and I know the sex therapists in the room are gonna say the same thing, the first question you say is not like, you know, hey, everything's working, <laughs> you're like, do you like your partner? Right? Yeah. Because absolutely. if you're not if you're not digging your partner and there's not that you know, that mental turn on, it's or if there's been resentment that's creeped into the relationship which right. can happen exactly. over years. I mean, of how course. many of us have gone through this? We're only divorced because we absolutely had to in order to survive. No one's like, Oh yeah, I wanna be divorced. It's like, Yay, pick me <laughs> You know. No, right. that's not the way it is. So there's <laughs> there's desire, there's getting the vagina back in to kind of yes. you know, kind of a nice thicker lining. 
Right. But what other, what, what else is on the menu? I mean, I know that you were talking about kind of, there's, there's bio, bioidentical hormone therapy or. Yeah, is there that, is. is that, yes. But yep. is that something else that you do or. Yes. Yes. Just touch on that a little bit because okay. I also want so to be able to. So we're talking this about up. desire and desire does involve our brain. And we also want energy, focus, good sleep. And one of the hormones that gets greatly ignored is testosterone in women. And it's very cardioprotective. It's protective when it's bioidentical. It's protective against breast cancer. And the woman who did most of the research is a breast cancer surgeon. And she's actually treating resistant breast cancers with the testosterone pellets, putting them around the tumors and watching them shrink. Okay, that was good enough evidence for me to say, okay, I'll, I'll put them in my own butt. So I stick them under, I do, I, I, when I give them to my patients, it goes into the fat of their tush, we put it in this area, I give it to myself. I'm this sorry, this is just a shot, it's an injection. It's, it in, it's, it's a pellet. pellet, it looks like a grain of rice, Okay. and there's a thin applicator, it's about three millimeters. You're, you're testing, you're doing blood tests for Oh, oh yes, very right? tailored, so you're very tailored to okay. individual. But that's bioidentical hormone therapy. But we don't need to use hormones in order to improve sensation or libido, we can do that inversely, in other words, making it feel so good that you want it all the time. So that's with other devices or procedures, like the O-Shot is very, very famous. That's the platelet-rich plasma. Okay, wait. okay. so what's the O-Shot? Platelet-rich plasma is the elixir of life. It's what our body makes to help us heal ourselves. So when we're little kids and we scrape our knee, yellow goo comes out, scab forms, scab falls off, nice new pink skin. If we look down on our knees, usually when I have my women up in the stirrup so I can look at their knees, and there are no scars. The reason for that is PRP. So that yellow goo that comes out, doctors analyzed it when they couldn't get A-Rod back on the field quick enough. They said, what is that yellow goo? Why did his scrapes heal so well? What's wrong with his joint? So they analyze the goo and they realize it contains platelets. Platelets that we know stop us from bleeding, but what we discovered is that they burst open in an area of injury or inflammation and release growth factors. These growth factors are signals that call our natural stem cells, our pluripotent stem cells, ready to heal and turn it into whatever tissue we need in that location. So when placed in the vagina, in our G-spot area, it's going to grow the soft tissue needed to support the bladder neck as well as the blood vessels that help create sensation okay. and directly, so into, is, painlessly, directly there, into the clitoris. There's a whole lot going on down there. Yeah. So, wait, so, so yeah. <laughs> are you doing, the, are you doing the, the throne and the laser and the shot? Depends or? on the person. So it depends what's going on what kind, they call me the Iron Chef of the vagina. So basically, <laughs> okay. it depends on what's necessary to so create you, the so right you, So you're coming in and you're saying, listen, I, this is just killing me and it feels like yes. it's ripping me apart. Right. So that's one thing. That, the other one is like, I'm just that, not able to orgasm the way that I used to. That's right. That's another thing. So yeah. that's why the consultation that's is correct. first because you have to bit, pull out your bag of that's tricks. And figure what it's going to be. That's exactly right. Okay, so I just want to touch on because I want to be able to open up uh, the, yeah. the, the the floor for questions. But there were two things that were fascinating to me. One was the uh, non-invasive breast breast lift PRP. Uh, okay, turns fat. and then turns the, into fat. and then the other one. There was another lift in separating her. There was something non-invasive. Was it a <laughs> the face or was it a the face? I don't know. or the labia? The labia. Oh, you can lift flat. the labia. The labia. The yeah. labia lift. Yeah, our labia. <laughs> Uh, be, get, our, our external labia become diff no, I'm sure don't, no one has to raise their hand but they, <laughs> My labia but they, has they lose they lose fat and the fat and it starts to hang and they hang okay, I right. got it I got it so and this is going they to they get in the way like I'm a cyclist and they're really in the way like I'm, right on the seat like what the heck why do I have to do that all of a sudden 
That's nonsense. So if we fill them back with fat, that goes away. Not only that, you don't even realize that our fat in our labia. Wait, wait, wait. Where is the fat coming into your labia? Like from you, the PRP, the platelet-rich plasma stimulates. So wait, fat. wait. So you're putting, you're, you're injecting your labia. Your, with, yes. With your the own, PLP. your yes, your blood. <laughs> yeah. That miracle. Portion. And it just. Lips and yes. lips and not separates it. Lips, yes. lips, <laughs> lips and fills. 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 It fills. It refills like a flat tire. There you go. Yeah. I guess that's also more important because it seems like I mean, like I, I mean, it seems like everybody's shaving nowadays too. So I would imagine <laughs> that there's a lot more showing there. It's than, at one hundred percent. Right, one hundred percent. So and, yeah. and there's discoloration that women all of a sudden are, are shamed about. And do, do you have something to to, to cure? Sure, that? sure. Yeah. yeah. There's like bleaching. Is there? Yes. <laughs> oh no. Ah. <laughs> oh my God. Well, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys ask questions. But the good news is, is that she's got a, a, a menu, actually. And, well, first of all, every, everybody on the table is actually, there's a, there's a consultation card, there's her information. The menu of services is not on there, but you just got a little sample there. Um, so I, I did ask uh, at the last minute, and I apologize, if anybody had any questions. And somebody actually sent in, because I didn't want you to have to ask questions of you know, what do I do if my labia has dropped? Uh, but, uh, but anyway, um, is there any data showing on the impact of libido, positive or negative, well, positive would be good, in patients that had severe COVID-19 and were hospitalized? Oh, great question. Great question. Uh, libido. I have not heard that. I've heard menstrual irregularities. From, I, the, from the vaccine. From, or, from the or vaccine from, and COVID. And COVID. Yeah, yeah. I have not heard anything about libido. Um, maybe they haven't come forward enough, but I think that that does make sense that that's a possibility. Because of the Very exhaustion. Strong. Right? Not only, well, the fatigue was horrible. I, I, I got all my vaccines, my booster, and I still got COVID. I had traveled to Scottsdale, Arizona, December 17th through 19th. I was speaking at a conference and I came home with COVID. Right. Right. Um, that was nasty. And the fatigue was unbearable. Right, I mean, so that would make really, sense. Really, if you're... and absolutely makes right. sense. But it's also that there are so many different aspects of long COVID that are affecting mood and depression and, right. and all of that. And it's all serotonin, dopamine, and, and our brain. So it, it right. certainly follows that that could be, and we'll probably see a lot more of that. Right. I want to say one thing that has absolutely nothing to do with the vagina. This has to do with my heart, which, um, but I started, and I just, I want you, because I think that this, you know, what you, what you were saying about reading the, the information about the drugs that you're taking, I think so often we take a drug and we just think it's going to just kind of take care of what it is that we're it's supposed to fix, and often it does, and that's the great thing about drugs, but there's almost always side effects, and mm -hmm. it's not for everybody. But I am not a person that gets depressed. And I was, the last couple months, I was like, oh my God, I feel really depressed. I had been, I had started on a uh, statin, a quest, quest, cholesterol, cholesterol? Mm -hmm. um, because my cholesterol is 300, okay? I mean, I don't look like I have a 300 cholesterol, I do. And I just felt like a complete failure that I would have to go on a statin, but um, I did. But I just, you know, it's like you've got to trust your body. You have to, like, just know if you're not feeling right. And then I, I called to my cardiologist. I said, and I looked, and I said, is this a sign? And then she said, yes. And I just, I felt better because it's like, okay, I'm going to, you know, I can, I can adjust that if I have to take medication, if I have to take a little bit less of that, you know, mm -hmm. do whatever it is that I have to do. But, it, you know, we need to know our bodies. And I love the fact that you're saying, listen, there's not a one, there's not a one-stop shop. You're going to be. You're going to have a consultation. Figure out what's going on. That yes. there is help. That there's a lot of different things here, also in this room. And I want you to share what you're doing. I mean, acupuncture. Also, there's Absolutely. there's so much Absolutely. that people are working with. Energy work, whatever. Yeah. So, anyway, I, there's questions. I'm sure that you have. Please ask them because I know that I did not ask everything that you want to know. And please <laughs> raise your hand. Talk to me oh. about your vagina. <laughs> Garland. Me? Yes, honey. Well, it was a little off topic, but you had mentioned the, uh, you had talked about the non-surgical breast lift. Right. Before it's mine. Woo-hoo. <laughs> <laughs> That's platelet-rich plasma. 
So using the PRP, which is that portion of your blood that stimulates the natural stem cells, will grow fat instead of nothing. So when injected in, a, it's like a butterfly pattern that we use, it builds that Wouldn't tissue. Wouldn't it be, and make it heavier? I mean, it does it, not. No. Mm -mm. Just it's, kind of. Yep, picks it up. So it's very useful also in areas that have breast implants already because sometimes there's rippling or some, you know, saline. You it's can kind of see it through the thin it skin and it puts a little bit of fat around it. Got yeah, it. it helps to cool. fill in that, that little bit of a ripple. And how long does it, thank you, Dr. Carolyn, how long does that last for approximately? It depends on the person. Aging, we have not quite arrested yet. You know, we're going down on this side of the hill with our hills <laughs> stuck in, but it's still happening. Aging continues. So it's a matter of how long it takes for that tissue to age. And fat is a lot more stubborn than anything else. <laughs> so it lasts for a pretty good long time, unfortunately, in some areas. But in the breast, good. Yes. Hi, I'm actually a pelvic floor physical therapist. Yes. And you know what? Stand I, up just because I'm not sure if everybody can hear good. I was looking forward to speaking with you. So I have a couple, like, couple questions regarding the laser. Is that the Mona Lisa? No, laser? but CO2, the one I have is Febilift. But the um, CO2 lasers, there are many, many on the market now. Mona Lisa is probably the most well-known because uh, that company had the biggest budget for I have a lot of patients like ask about that. Yeah. Talked about it. Um, yeah. And also regarding the MSL chair. Yes. Do you feel like it's, like it's helpful in terms of like when they have like the pelvic organ prolapse? Yes. Uh, and I'm sorry, what, what, what exactly? Pelvic organ prolapse, pop. Okay, what is that? Otherwise known as pop. What is that? So it's like when they have like, um, when the pelvic floor is weak, so they have like a, Yeah, 100%. And I, I, what we have, there's a study out of Italy on the Imcella looking at pelvic organ prolapse. And b there are different degrees. So it's how far do our tissues fall. And the, here's the thing about pelvic organ prolapse. Women don't talk about it. They're shamed by it. But once we live on this earth with gravity, and God forbid we have a child, and it doesn't matter how we have that child, whether it's C-section or vaginal birth, we still weaken all the pelvic ligaments and muscles by just carrying the weight of that pregnancy. And in doing so, it weakens our pelvic floor, the cradle of civilization, I call it, and the cella is the chair that's gonna tighten all those muscles. It helps to lift up some of that descensus or falling down that we have. Our vagina actually becomes a hernia. And before we have a baby, the vagina is a cylinder. After we have a baby, it's almost a square. It falls in from all four sides. <laughs> <laughs> the top is our bladder, the bottom is our rectum, and the sides are just laxity, where everything gets kind of loose. And one of my patients described her vagina as a used softball glove, you know, the one that we have in the bottom of our closet, we're all familiar with that. So anyway, this weakness of our pelvic floor causes this relaxation of the bladder, the rectum, or the uterus. And when it comes out all the way, it's a fourth degree. When it's a third degree, it's presenting right at the opening. A second degree, it's just a little, like with a little bit of a push down, like, oh, push like you're having a baby. I can, everything comes on down into my, face. like, whoa. All right, here it comes. And that's, right, we see this every day when we do this kind of work. So pelvic floor physiatrists, uh, that, it's incredible when, when they're helping with women to be able to tighten up that pelvic floor. A third degree to a fourth degree, these where we miss the boat. We're, we're to any of these devices, a little bit too late. So in my opinion, this has to become mainstay. This has to happen in between our children. This has to happen mm -hmm. from all along. And if it becomes a routine with women in the, in, when we go for our pap smear, 
then we'll never have the complete prolapse where everything's hanging. I mean, there are women with four, where the whole, everything's hanging yeah. out in between their legs, and so this is not okay. So you're not invasive until it gets too late, and then you have to have surgery? Yeah. Well, or, or real physical therapy sometimes can help. There are other devices, or that's a whole other field. No, uh, but, but we have pessaries, and we have surgeries, right. and yes, it gets to a point where we do resort to our surgical procedures that honestly break my heart. But people that don't know about alternative therapies yes. that you're offering, yes. which is what we're talking about, don't know that they don't have to do the surgery unless they've investigated these other alternatives. Do you want me to hug her? Because I can't tell you. I mean, I've been on my Thank you. soapbox for years, and I'm desperate. But do you want to hear something really sad? I already told you one pathetic thing, which is men can still have sex, whatever. But when it comes to this topic of having an issue with why is it that we have to be in this condition of losing our urine and not being able to know there are alternatives. I went to every hospital in my area and asked the chairman if I could come and do a talk. I'm not asking for business. I'm asking to teach the other physicians that these procedures exist. It's education. Not one called me back. Not one. They were right. all there, right? Right. right. <laughs> they were. But it's how, pathetic. How long does the end cell last? Because I've had the treatment, and I'll just say how long. Four to six months, you should have maintenance. If they didn't put you on a maintenance protocol, they have to because it's muscle. So all of our studies only lasted out about six months, and then there was regression. Okay. It depends on your condition. So it could be once a month in some women, but it's usually once every four to six months. You have to come in, have a seat, best seat in the house, right. for about <laughs> two, two times. Right, right. What do you think about the, um, the eggs, the vaginal eggs? You know, the Chinese medicine is jade or now there's silicone. Is that you put it in and like yeah, you're holding it? I think that there's some value to it, but it can be used incorrectly. And I think that that's what gets it the bad rap, is that you're doing it at home, no one's guiding you, and therefore it could hurt you. You could overtax the muscle and doing it too much, and it's counterproductive. Let's say it's like 15 minutes, like you were training in the gym, you wouldn't be rocking around like well, you don't really want to wear it all day no, long. I can't even get on the soul cycle bike, let alone get, just women get my egg away. Right. So that's, but I think that there's value to it when used correctly. Well, especially when you're talking about the preventative care. Sure, sure. We're going to sign up. That's going to be our next exercise class, Sophia. Yeah. We're going to all make it. <laughs> exercise. <laughs> I'm sorry. But. I saw a commercial, actually, just this week. Who's daughter? I'm sorry. John London. John London okay. from ABC. Yeah. Some shorts you put on. <laughs> yes, know, yes. Uh, to do the, well, they were promoting it for bladder leaks. Yes. Uh, is that the same thing that you're talking about? Oh, golly, no. No. <laughs> that's, a, that's an at-home device. I think it, it, it's showing some promise. I don't know if there are any true clinical trials on that to show <coughs> its true efficacy. Not that everything has to. I think that it shows. It looks like electrical. Yeah, exactly. They're electrical stim shorts. They look like spin pants. That, that's what they look like. They look just like spin shorts. I haven't tried them on yet. I haven't so tried them on. I don't think that does what the chair is doing. Oh, golly, no. No. The, the chair literally fires 100% of the muscle fibers super maximally, stronger than your body could ever do on its own. And they're when I showed you my arm, what I was saying, what I didn't continue to say, is that the machine then, the company that made the chair, said, what other muscles do people want? Well, what do they want? They want abs, they want arms, they want glutes, they want legs. So they developed a machine that does the same for other muscles of the yeah. body. 
The Kardashians use it. That's correct. <laughs> so it's N sculpt, E N sculpt, and that's for the rest of the body. The only reason why I'm bringing it up now is because to show the efficacy of what happens when you use these devices is they literally have human and animal studies and they did CAT scan, MRI, and ultrasound that showed the change in the muscle and what happened to the fat around the muscle. The muscle is so taxed that it kills the fat that lays over the muscle, but it also increases the number of muscle fibers as well as the size of the muscle fibers that are present in that area that's been treated. There's nothing human that does that. We cannot increase the number of muscle fibers in an area. We are born basically with a finite number until now with these devices. We have literally increased the number of muscle fibers. So, like the power so what? Plate, the power plate that was the neck device that we heard about, is it similar to that? It's much stronger. Okay. Is, yeah. uh, we have one more question and then we're going to. Yeah. Then we have to. Yes. Uh, is there a higher risk for those women that have not given birth to anything in particular, or they're running at the same average of their baby? But having a pregnancy certainly increases. A pregnancy, whether it's cesarean section or vaginal, will increase your risk of pelvic floor relaxation. There's no doubt about that. When it comes to women in general, that doesn't, not everybody who have never had, like, it's not like if you never had a child, you're never gonna have these conditions. That's not true. We live with gravity. If we were on the moon, our boobs would float, we wouldn't have anything, <laughs> nor would we have bones, but that's beside the point. So the most important aspect is that we have gravity and that can weaken your tissues, aging naturally. We have sagging that happens in our face. It happens everywhere in our body. So there's nothing in particular Women who have never had children will have this less, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. One more quick question. In your practice, um, do you do the regular amount of oncological and cystic exams and pap smears and all of that? In Manhattan, I haven't been. In my New Jersey practice, I still have a full gynecological practice as well. I want you to be my gynecologist. <laughs> Remember I said that we had to ask each other out? <laughs> would you? Would you look at my vagina? <laughs> I'd hop into the stairs for you, you anytime. <laughs> um, there was one more person, and then we're going to call it a day, a night. Yes. Go ahead. Um, as a sex therapist, I just wanted to add my two cents. Stand, stand, stand. Oh, um, I'm Absolutely. We are definitely going to have, uh, we, we, we're going to have a lot of different topics coming up. Cryptocurrency is the next one, which is a little <laughs> off topic, <laughs> but then, <laughs> that's going to be next one. But then, then we're definitely going to be getting it back, back into, uh, back into the vagina. Um, anyway, I want to, I want I just want to say that word over and over again. Um, anyway, thank you so much because, uh, I mean, I'm so glad that you came. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So um, make sure to take the flowers, make sure to take the cards, um, and I feel like there was something else. Go home together. Go home together. <laughs>